no matter how many regresses do we have, we can still apply the OLS in the same way. So if there are k slope coefficients plus one intercept coefficients in total k plus one, we will have k plus one first order conditions at the same time. And for multiple regression, it, it is still okay to use SER and ask it to measure how well the model fits the data. So the SER is about the sum of squared residuals. And so in this part, it is not n minus two anymore. It is n minus k minus one. And k is the number of regresses in the model. And the definition for R squared is exactly the same. ES is divided by TS. So just now, we add the percentage of English learners in our model. So in, in the new model, we regress the test score on student-teacher ratio and the percentage of English learners. But that is not the end. We can have a third model, including another factor, and a fourth model, and so on. So suppose I'd like to add an x3. But the fact that x3 didn't make any contribution in explaining why. So how will R square change by adding X3? shouldn't change by adding a useless factor because it doesn't make any contribution in explaining a portion of what but at the same time you can see that if I add a useless factor x3 R square just remained the same it didn't increase so if we just simply compare the model one with two regressors that are useful, and the model three adding a useless regressor x3, compare the R square of these two models, they are exactly the same. So just by looking at R square, I don't know which one is better. So this is the drawback of R square for multiple regression. 
because it never decreases, even we continuously adding some useless factors in the model. So if we only use R square as a standard for the measure of fit, so people will just add as much as factors as they can in the model to make the model very big. Because adding another factor may be helpful. Even if it is not helpful, there's no harm in R squared. So, uh, you can say that it never increases and it will decrease either? It's so never decreased. Yes. So if this is the this is a good model, including x1 and x2. I add an x3. <coughs> but this x3 is cannot explain why. Even though x3 is useless, but we still have x1 and x2. x1 and x2 are still playing their role in explaining why. So r square will not decrease. So due to this drawback of r square, the econometricians try to add a penalty for adding an extra regressor, and they develop the <coughs> adjusted R square, denoted as R square bar. And according to the definition of adjusted R square, so this part, SSR divided by TSS, is just one minus R square. So if, us, if the value of R square is given, you can simply calculate the adjusted R square using the definition. Let's use this equation. 